let's look at detail design because that's where it gets more interesting. So what we'll do now is we'll switch to details and I'm going to change away from a window actually. I want to combine all this into something a bit more interesting. So let's make the overall width 2.7 meters. We'll make the height 2.4 meters and we'll set it zero millimeters on the ground because what I'm actually going to do here is create a combination door and window unit. So something a little bit different to the standard. So a number of settings we can look at, but the first thing I'll do is take a look at the set out and we're just going to change the shape. So on the head of the window, we can actually change to all of these different shape types here. And we can do the same on the sill. So let's have some steps in the bottom here. And we'll change that to 600. We can then look at the dimensions. Now this is to do with how we break the window up into various different panel sizes and things. So in dimensions, we can choose to pre-configure what size various gaps and things are going to be. For example, I can put in a 600mm horizontal break and you'll see that divides from the top 600. We can do the same from the bottom. I actually don't want any breaks in here just now, so I'm going to leave both of those as zero. But we can also configure these additional panels. So what I want to do is actually configure these to be 300. If we then move on to glazing, in here we can see a panel and this is one of the main distinguishing features between our window and standard windows and doors with an Archicad. I actually have a selectable panel here. Now, there's not much to see at the moment, but if I just click this plus button, what it actually does is, as you can see, it breaks this unit into two parts. Each one is then selectable. If I add another piece, we then have three parts. So you can see now I've got my 300mm step, and what we can do with it is, let's just grab this unit here, I'm actually going to go and change this into a right hung door. And you see as it does that, it creates what it needs, puts the door panel in place. I'm actually going to choose to insert a panel above there, and this is where my additional 300 comes in. And what I'll do is that top panel we will take and we will make it just a fixed pane of glass. There are other options, as you can see in here, we can do all sorts of different bits with it, but let's just leave it as that. We'll take this window unit here and maybe what we'll do with it is make that, uh, what can we have? We'll make that one a bottom right hung and we'll take this one here and we'll go in and we'll make it a bottom left hung. So effectively I've got side by side tilt turn windows. So we now have two different window types. We have a fixed panel of tilt turns and also a door type. So what I can then do is move on to doors and you'll see we can choose the type of operation it is. So this is just a standard door, but we can make it a double swing, we can make it folding, we can make it sliding, and we can even just have it as a framed opening if that's what we need with it. But I'm quite happy with that. I uh, don't need to join any adjacent, so I don't need to worry about these connections here, but what I am gonna do is go and change the door leaf. And you'll see we've got a wide selection here we can choose from. Maybe I'll just go for something like this. We could then choose to change the dimensions so we can come in and configure all of these individually. I'm just skipping through these for time here just to give an overview at this stage. So I'm going to leave things as they are. But what I will do is maybe change the surfaces so that they are something nicely contrasting with the red paint. So let's go for royal blue. So we're definitely not going to miss this door. And maybe what I'll do is we'll make the insert a pale blue. So something that's certainly going to stand out. We can also go and look at hardware, so if necessary we can go and add some handles. We have different types we can choose from, so let's just have a traditional lever handle. We can put a plate on there if we want, and we can even set the position of the handle on the plate, so we can do all these sort of things as required. There's other options, interior handles. We have the option to choose which door panels have handles, and we can also go and add kick plates if those are required as well. Looking at the frame in the glass, there's all sorts of options for choosing what sizes are used, what the configuration is. We can add timber sills, we can add extensions, we can change the properties of the inner frame, and we can also set the properties of the glazing. So right now we have just one glass panel. We could change that so that it's double glazed, or there is an option for triple glazing as well. In terms of trims, we can actually add elements to the inside or outside of the opening itself. 
We can add mouldings to the top, to the base, the sides, and also a cell if required. Similarly, there's options for interior trims. Final thing is just display options, and that allows us to control how this displays in our plans and how it behaves in terms of labelling, etc. But what I'm going to do is just go and place this. So I'm going to come across here, find the middle, give it a click, and then just choose, does it open inwards, outwards, where does it go? So let's have it opening that way. If I take another look at the 3D, we can start to see how it behaves. Now what I should have done is pay a bit more attention to the sizes. So if I come in here, this third one should actually be at zero. So that means our door comes all the way down to the base. We do have a foundation wall here, so that's perfectly normal. But we've now configured it so it comes down here. You will see there's some other hotspots, and these allow me to actually pick up and reconfigure this shape on the fly. So I can actually increase or decrease the height of the door as required. So there's a fair amount of configuration there. 